Now, question number three. Um, a student is investigating the image produced by a converging lens. She is using the apparatus shown in the figure. Now, the illuminated object consists of a triangular shape hole in a piece of a card. Figure 3.2 shows the full size and then they want you to measure and record the height of the triangular shape. Now, for this kind of situation, you just need to use your ruler only. Okay? Mm. So if I straight away get the information from the answer sheets, right, it will be like 1.4 cm over here. Okay, but you guys use your ruler to measure. Okay. Now for part B. The distance view between the triangular object and the center of the lens is set to 20 cm. So they are referring to this portion here that sets it to 20 cm already. Okay. The screen is moved until a focused image of the illuminated object is seen as shown in the figure. Then he repeat for 30, 40, 50 cm and 60 cm. Her results are in the table. Okay. So they want you to measure and record the table. Okay, so H image over here, if you use your ruler to measure, you get about 4.5 cm. Okay. Now, as for part 2, they want you to calculate the value of N. They have given you the N formula to be H0 over HI. Okay, H object over H image. So N equals to, just now we get 1.4. So 1.4 divided by 4.5. So at the end, you should get about 0 0.3111. Okay, but then you follow their significant figure. You can see that now all of them are having two significant figures. So we put 0 0.311. Now, part C. Plot a graph of U against N. You do not have to start your graph at the origin. Okay, let me grab the picture here first uh, so you guys can see it clearer. Okay, now when you guys are plotting your graph, um, be sure to plan your graph first before you actually um, put it in. Now, they want you to draw this one on your y-axis, this is your y-axis, and then your x-axis is the end. Okay, wait, huh? So this one is now your x-axis. So, for your y-axis, right, your maximum is 60. So, somehow, you need to fit it inside your graph over here. Okay, but because they said you don't need to start at the origin, so maybe you can start at 20, 40, and so on. So 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and so on. Um, if the measurement... Okay, wait, huh? So then you ask me, you can show the investigating relationship in more detail again. Um, are you referring to the previous question? Okay, can I? Alright, now then the next question. If the measurements comes between two numbers when using a ruler to measure, which number do I choose? Like between 1.5 and 1.5? Oh, okay. Um, I think you are referring to something like this one. Okay, if you guys have a ruler, let's say this is um, 1, this is 2, and then you got in between over here. And when you are measuring, you get your value like somewhere around here. Now, if you read somewhere in the middle, la, you can actually put your answer as like point something or so. So, we know that this is 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5 over here. So, the next one should be 0.6 ma. If you read it in the middle, you can write your answer as 1.55. But if you want to follow their significant figure, like just now, these are only two significant figures. You put 1.55 here back to your 2SF. So you put 1.6 as your answer. <laughs> so yeah, Kali, that's your question. Then Sean asked me, how to know which is x-axis and y-axis? Okay, 
Now, usually the question will give you like, like Y and X axis. But if they didn't, then you need to read what they are asking you to draw. So if let's say they said, draw a graph of A against B. So your A over here will definitely be your Y axis. Then your B over here, it will be your X axis. Okay, that's how we read the against type of sentence. Um, if the question did not specify how you will draw the graph, then do we draw the line of best fit? Um, you need to see the trend. So if let's say the point that you get right is a very clear like a straight line, then yes, you need to draw a line of best fit. But when you are drawing your graph, and you notice that your graph are like having a very clear curve like that, then I cannot just draw a line of that speed line. Doesn't make sense. So you need to like draw a curve for them instead. Okay. Yeah, but when you guys are drawing your graph, you need to make sure of something. You need to make sure to fill at least two thirds of the graph. So it's like, if I give you this whole graph paper and you guys only draw something like this, they will mark you wrong straight away. Okay, because you didn't fill in two thirds of the graph. So what you need to do is you need to change the scale and you make sure you actually fill in most of the graph area. Okay, must my best fit touch zero? Um, no, your best fit line doesn't need to touch zero if it doesn't. So if like I got a very clear graph like this, it cuts through over here, can also one, doesn't need to pass through the origin. How to know if you extend the graph? Um, what do you mean by extending the graph here? Yeah? Mm, wait, huh? We need to extend until it touches the axis. Um, yeah, touching axis, yes, you can do that. But just now, um, I got a question asking me like, do we need to pass through origin? Like, we doesn't necessarily need to pass through origin. Right? You can pass through any point on the y axis. Okay. For the last experiment, if you don't know what to say, any tips for that? Um, you mean for for this one? Right? Um, okay, all those later I will cover with you guys. Uh, like I read a summary, then you guys can screenshot that. Um, do we need to extend our graph or just point to point? Um, you should extend your graph. Okay. Actually, let me let me. Okay, I use I draw this one for you guys to see like how you can draw the graph. So if they tell me that I don't need to start at um, 0 Maybe I start at 10 in this case Like that So this will be my y-axis And then my x-axis I need to cover until the maximum of 2.8 So about 3 is enough So if I start from Okay, let's say this is 0 Then maybe here will be 1 Here will be 2 And then here will be 3 so your axis, you guys can write something like this for them. Okay. So once you guys um, have your scales accurately drawn, right? The next thing will be to label your graph. Okay. So when you are labeling your graph, make sure to tell them what is it representing and what's the unit. So your x-axis right now is actually n. n doesn't have any unit, so you don't need to write anything there. But then the y-axis is representing your u, so make sure to put your centimeter. Okay, so if I plot all the points right now, 0 0.31 is 20. So 0 0.3 is about um, here. So you put your first point. Okay, then can we start from origin for y-axis? Yes, you can. Uh, but you must make sure that you must cover until the maximum point. No problem. Okay. But because I said do not have to mark, so I don't want it. Okay. Then the next one, 30 is um, 0 0.93. 0 0.9 roughly here. Um, 30 will be somewhere around here. 
1.6 is 40. So I think it's about here. Lah. Okay. And then next one, um, 2.3 is 50. So 2.3 is 50. I think it's somewhere around here. Okay, lastly, 2.8 is 60. So 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, um, 60. Hmm. So you guys can see right now, I have all these points like that. Now. So when I draw the line of best fit, you can pass through the points first. Like, you don't need to point to point. You can like go to the x, the y axis no problem. Okay, but when you guys are drawing your graph, make sure the points are like balanced here. So if let's say I draw a graph like this one, I got a lot of points like that. So if I draw my line in this way, definitely this will be wrong. Because you can see that the top and the bottom region, the points are like not balanced yet. So however, if I draw it in this way, then it's okay. Because the top and bottom each have like one point, so it's like balancing. Okay. Um, can I read the question now? If the temperature increase, brightness of lamp will decrease, right? Uh, yes, correct, Fahim. Can I place 0 0.93 at 0 0.99 or should I adjust it to about 0 0.93? Um, Khalid, you should adjust it to about 0 0.93. Roughly, you do. Okay. How do you know when to extend the graph beyond the final value? Oh, you mean? You mean over here, like extend it further. Oh, um, this one here, you shouldn't do that. Uh, you should just maximum go to that point only. Uh, unless the next question, they ask you to extend, then only you do. But usually we won't extend. I must draw from the lowest point to the highest point. Um, Andrew, you need to look at the trend of your points. If your points are like rising up, then yes, you need to do that. But if your points are like going downwards, then you just draw down in this way. It depends on what data do you have. You follow your trend. Okay, um, but the one you draw in the grid is not balanced too. Oh, yeah, roughly lah. Like, okay, so if I adjust a little bit more. Okay, great. Huh? Mm. Okay, then probably something like this would be better. Okay, so you can see now, um, I passed through like most of the points, but with one at the top. Yeah, so you guys will need to slowly adjust this. If I don't extend to y axis, also can. Yeah, no, no worries. One, this one you don't need to extend, no problem. Okay, um, can I draw the graph first, then find the values of twenty micro. 20 U plus M. Oh, you mean you plot the points without all these numbers? Is that what you are talking about? Um, if you don't have the number, it's very hard for you to plot the points. The numbers over here must be according to scale 1. So you can see like 10 boxes here, my difference is 10. So every 10 boxes must be 10 also. You must follow your scale. So yeah, you draw the scale first, only you plot the it is must the line pass through the first x um khalid not necessary uh, it doesn't need to pass through this point if the best fit line is not there okay so if like this is my first point and then my all data are like that huh? so my line of best fit will be somewhere around here i don't need to pass through the first point Then when you ask how to find the gradient with the graph, okay. When you guys are looking for the gradient of the graph, you need to choose two points that is on the line. Okay, and then the two points right, they must be as far away as possible. So like you maybe choose this coordinate and you choose this coordinate here, and you use your gradient formula. Y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this would be the formula for the gradient. 